Hey, what's up, guys? My name's Sammy, and I'm here to teach you guys um, the basics of MX server scripting. Um, I'm just gonna focus on like the actual server script itself in this tutorial, and um, I'll make another tutorial on using them in the server and and just general server commands because it's part of the server commands tutorial. So that'll be coming out later. Um, but for now, I'm just going to go over what this is and what you need to do to make these yourself. So first thing you're going to notice is that they're saved as .mxs files. And um, that's important because that's how the game re recognizes what they are. So .mxs is, is basically an MX server script. An MX server script is just a collection of server commands that you could execute all these in server but it does them all at once with one simple execute command in game so it's it's just an easier way to do commands and it's how a lot of people host like races when you see people hosting a race like this is how they do it most likely um so the first line you see here hashtag mx server script it's not really a hashtag it's a uh, pound symbol i think um this first line you see right here pound mx server script um this is needed for every single script because it's what tells the server that you're trying to execute an mxs file um, without this it won't work it'll give you an error so you need this on the very first line of every script you write and um, so other than that these are like I said just the server commands that you could do they're all in the server readme like I said I'm gonna make another video going over each and every one of them um, but for now this this is assuming you already know about that and you just want to learn about what scripts are and what they do so broadcast is the server command to broadcast text to the server. Um, it'll literally just, in the chat window, it'll put whatever you write after the space, it'll put that in the chat. So like, um, it's going to have this and just, you won't see like, oh, someone said, it's just going to have that, that text. So you put space and you can write literally whatever you want, like, at all um this symbol right here um you don't need it to broadcast something out you can just have like literally if you want like broadcast hell hello server <laughs> like everyone in the server will just see this like that's perfectly fine that'll work but what this symbol is is um it allows you to change the color of of the text following it so um, the very first thing you see in this like symbol combination is this escape thing. I don't actually know how to make it like on the keyboard. I don't know what to do to make that symbol, but what I do is just copy it from my other scripts and just reuse it because that's just the easiest way for me to do it. And um, because you don't you don't need to like make these every time. It'll work fine. But and then you have this. I'm gonna upload this so that you guys can um. You guys can get it and modify it however you want and look at each command. And um, What you should probably do is if you want to do colors, just copy this entire block. Um, and it's the easiest way. And to just change the color you want, you just change this number. This number is a Unix color code thing. And it'll change the color of the text. Like that's This stuff doesn't matter. This stuff, you need this and the M for every single color and the middle part the two numbers is what changes the actual color so that's the only thing you need to change if you want to change the colors um i have a list of all the colors right here and um there's actually more than this there's like bold versions of all these but these are all the actual colors just normal colors and i'll make an, a list of like the bold versions also and upload that too um but basically red is 31 Green is 32, aqua is 36, blue 34, white, so on. So if you wanted to change like someone's name to say red, 
well, this color would be 31. Broadcast this 31, because 31 is red. So if you want something to be aqua, you change this to 36, and then his name would be an aqua color. So, um, that's basically the broadcast command and what it does. Like I said, you can write whatever you want, and it's, it has multiple different uses, but that's basically the first line you'll typically see something like this in most scripts for races. Um, but yeah, the next command that I like to use is all ignore all. And what all ignore all does is mutes the chat for the racers. So like if you race an event and you notice that you don't see chat except for like maybe oh people joining or leaving the server but you don't see people actually talking that's cuz this command has been enabled and it's keeping you from talking and um it's just something most race hosters do it's just like nicer cuz you don't have to be distracted by all the chat if you're racing so yeah that's just something most people do you don't need like i said all of this stuff is optional completely like you can write it however you want but this is this is a good way to do it um the next command set track if you already know about servers you know what set track does um it just set tracks to track instances that are in your server at the moment so like this would set the track to instance 0 um but you can just put you can put whatever number in here like as if you were doing it in game just set track space track number um yeah so force spec all command what does that do um so this force spec all command what it does is puts everybody in the server in spectate mode and that's what you need to do if you're hosting a race you need to do this first before you force play anybody because if you don't then everyone is just going to be in the race like it'll just literally have everybody in there you need to force spec them and then put them in after like this line must come before the force play line or else it's just going to put everyone in or everyone out if you if you put this at the end of the script okay that's a good point to make right here it's going to execute these commands in a line. So you're going to see them all at once because it does it so quickly. But what it's actually doing is going line by line and executing these commands. So if it sees this command first, it's going to do these after. Like just read in a line, self-explanatory. It's going to go in a line, do everything after this in order. So if you had this line at the very end like that, it would have done all this, and then it's going to force spec everybody, so everyone's going to be in spectate mode. So all that you did is just pointless, because it just puts everyone in spectate mode anyways at the end. So you need to have that in the correct order. Make sure it's before... Um, make sure it's before the force play commands. And that leads me into the force play commands. Uh, you, you force play somebody to put them in the race this is the simplest way to put it if you want somebody to be in player mode and not not in warm up not in spectate whatever you want to call it you need to force play them and um to do that you just type force play and then there's a space here and then you put their uid um these can be stacked like for example if you want them all in one you can have like this uid and then you want to put this uid there you can do that just separate them by space and it works fine I personally don't like to do that some people do that but I don't like to do that because I feel like it's more organized if it's all in one block like this so if you need to transfer them to like oh say if a main event script or a semi script or an LCQ you can just like control X that and then paste it into another script and you don't even have to rewrite anything so that's probably the easiest way to do that for each player have a block um and what this third command does is it broadcasts to that uid so all, it just broadcasts just like the normal broadcast command does the same thing except it'll only be seen by the uid you put right there 
So like what I use that for is to tell the person what race they're in. So like you are in heat two or heat one in this case. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can just use it like a normal broadcast command, except only they'll see it. And I usually like to make it a bright color, like this is purple, so that they see it right away and they know they're in the race. And it's just helpful so they don't have to look for their name. And a lot of people appreciate that when you do it like that. So that's how I uh, do my put my players in a race is a block of three. The broadcast, the very first broadcast to broadcast their name. The force play to put them in the race. And the broadcast too to tell them the race they're in. So this entire part that we just went through is just for like the player part. So each, like I said, just to recap, I like to use three commands for each player. Broadcast their name, force play them in the race, and then tell them what race they're in. So that's that. Um, after that, I usually just broadcast the space out. Like, this will just be an empty space. And then I broadcast how many riders are in the race. So it's just something I do. Um, it's not necessary. That's just I'm just explaining to you what this is in case you see it and you're like, oh... Is that something special? No, it's nothing special. It's just literally broadcasting. Um, so yeah, that's basically what a server script is. I mean, you can put any command you want. Like you can, you can do the add track command. You can do anything that you can do in server. You can put it here, and um, yeah, they get executed in game. So uh, I'll be making a video, and these will be up at the same time, but. There's another video on this channel of how to like do in-game server commands and that'll explain all these commands to you and plus all the other ones that are available and then as a part of that one of the server commands is how to execute these in server but for now I'll show you where you would put them like say you have a server and you're hosting it uh on your PC as 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 not that's that's not ideal for hosting races you don't really want to be hosting them on your PC it's probably not going to be enough for if you're having a big race but I mean you can apply these techniques to anything if you're gonna have a server like on your desktop what you're gonna do to execute this is literally just put it in here put it in there put it in the MX server folder so that the server has it in there and um, you can execute it from there as long as it's in there um, you can also if you uh, this is what I like to do personally you can make a folder called scripts and then you can put it in there um, you, yeah it's the one where we're gonna you can put that script in there You can put this script in there, and um, uh, in you can also execute it like that in game. It's just one extra line uh, in the command. It's not hard, and it's just way more organized than I like to do it like that. But yeah, so the other tutorial, go ahead and watch that. It shows you how to execute these, plus how to use all the other server commands. So go ahead and use that. And um, yeah, thanks for watching this. I hope it helped you out. You can. Leave any questions you have in the comments and I'll I'll answer them as long as I know how to answer them or if they're able to be answered. Thank you guys for watching and yeah, hope to see you in the next tutorial.